Welcome friends, I am Rose Dotley and today we're going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be unboxing my new Craft Pro heat press. I'll share my likes, dislikes, a solution to a problem, and we'll also give you tips on general heat pressing along the way. Here it is, all boxed up. As you can see, I purchased this from Heat Press Nation. Shipping was free. And the first thing that I notice here, it says not to discard the box or packaging. You will need it for warranty purposes. So let's go ahead and break this open. The first thing I notice is that it's got a piece of wood on top. This is pretty well packaged. Let's go ahead and remove the wood. First paper to come out is a warranty. It's got a one year warranty. All right, I brought my husband in to get it out of the box because it is heavy. It weighs 80 pounds. It's covered in plastic and has a zip tie that needs to be removed. I'm going to have my husband carry it up to my workroom. I notice there's another piece of wood on the bottom of the box for shipping and the user guide. Before I go into detail and setup, I wanted to share what I have my heat press sitting on. This table is from Ikea. It's three separate parts. The two storage units on each side are five drawer Alex units and they're about $79 each. And then you buy the tabletop separately. It's called the Lag Cap 10 and was $30. In order to secure it, my husband did attach the storage units with a tabletop using screws right underneath here. We wanted to make sure that the tabletop didn't slide off when I closed my heat press. Whatever you decide to use, just make sure that you use something really sturdy because these are pretty heavy. And if it were to fall, you're dealing with high heat and you don't want to cause a fire. Real quick, I love using this light. It attaches to the table. It's nice and bright and works perfectly for detailed work. This is considered a clamshell heat press because of the way it opens and closes. Now, one of the things that sold me though was this slide out drawer. If you see this handle, this pulls right out and you can work right on the outside. You can see things a lot better instead of also working under the heat. Although the heat really doesn't bother me, I'm so used to it, but I like to see things up a little closer. I didn't want a swivel heat press due to space. This is a 15 by 15 inch heat press. Now this is a size that I would definitely recommend. However, they do make heat presses smaller and even larger. Someday, I wouldn't mind upgrading to a 16 by 20, but for now, I'm keeping this one. This is a standard size. Now I know some of you may be wondering what I've got going on with these covers that weren't on there before. Your machine originally comes with just the bottom mat. These are basically heat press nonstick Teflon sheets. They help protect your design so it doesn't melt on your press. So you definitely want to make sure that you get these to protect your work. I will post a link on where to get them in my description below. You mainly need a Teflon sheet on the top, but I like to use one on the bottom as well. I just fold it over and then tape it with heat resistant tape, although you don't need to use the tape as well. You can just fold it over and it should stay just fine. Now I've got a heat press hack for you that I've been doing for years now. Now when you're pressing a shirt, most people take their Teflon sheet, place it on top of their design, press it, then remove the sheet, then put it back in, and they keep doing that with every shirt. But when you have a heavy workload, there's no time for that. So I've got a solution here for you. You buy yourself a larger Teflon sheet, then your platen. This one is a 19 by 19 inch, and then you secure it on top with magnets. Let me show you. I set my Teflon sheet on the bottom of this platen, then I fold it over, made a crease, kind of rubbed it with my fingers to kind of make a crease and show where my line was. Then I folded the sides like a gift. Then I made another fold on top, took my two fingers and again rubbed it all the way through to make a nice crease. This will help guide you on where to cut. You want to cut at least one inch past the crease and you want to do this to both sides, left and right. I'll post a link below in my description and tell you where you can find magnets like these. I've got three magnets on each side. I've got three in the back and then I have one in the front. This hack will make a big difference for you. Let's move on to the setup. Here you've got your on and off switch. Make sure you plug in your heat press directly to the wall and not an extension cord. Voltage is 110. Below you have your circuit breaker reset button in case you ever trip it. To set your temperature and timer, it would be so much better if you would be able to close your cover so that you could get in there and have enough room to do it. But according to the manual, it says you have to keep it open while you do it. 
Before we get to it, let me just close this to show you the front. If you notice, this is already in Fahrenheit. This is how it came. Okay, I'm gonna try and not move my camera so much, but I'm really trying to get up close here. So let's go ahead and start. The top is going to be your temperature. And if you notice, you've got a set button here. Basically, you just press your set button. My temp is already set at 325, but you're going to use these up and down arrows to set your desired temp. After you do, then press your set button again. The max temp is 400 degrees. You move to the bottom and this is your timer. So in order to set your timer, you do the same thing. First, you press the set button, then use the up and down arrows to set the time you want. I always have mine for 15 seconds. After you set your time, then you press the set button again. When you turn on your machine, the top plan is what gets hot. This is where your heating element is. A big plus is that this machine distributes heat evenly compared to others. Speaking of temperature, take a pic of this cheat sheet by Heat Press Nation that will show you the right temp to use with your material. One quick tip, you always want to make sure that you pay attention to the height of your table you're putting your heat press on. I am five feet tall and if you notice, it's a little harder for me to reach the handle. So if you see right here, my arm touches the platen. Well, that platen gets really hot, so I can't touch it. So what I have to do is basically just grab it from the side and close it that way. Honestly, it's no big deal, just a short people problem, just something to be aware of. One drawback about this heat press that I did notice is that it does take a little longer to heat up than what I think would be my old one. Right now it's 242. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on and I'm gonna time it and we're gonna see how long it takes to come to my 325 degree temperature. I recommend that you turn on your heat press a few minutes in advance while you're weeding out your design. Surprisingly, it took about 19 minutes to get to 325. Next thing, very important, is to set your pressure. This is your pressure knob here. Vinyl sticks best when you use the perfect recipe and pressure is one of the key ingredients. So if you want to tighten your pressure, you would turn right clockwise. And to loosen your pressure, you would turn left counterclockwise. I'm gonna show you a test you can do to make sure your pressure is set correctly. You simply wanna take a sheet of paper, any paper is fine, this is copy paper. You lay it about two inches in to your uh, heat press. You're gonna close it. Now you wanna pull on your paper. If your paper slips out or moves at all, then you know you need to adjust your pressure and tighten it. You would turn the knob right to tighten it. Your sheet of paper should not come out just like this. My pressure is set perfectly. All right, so we're gonna open this up and you're gonna wanna do this to each side as well. Now let's talk about the first problem I ran into with this heat press. When you have your shirt on your heat press, whether you pull it out or not, sometimes your shirt will get caught in some springs that are behind here. So you'll have to be careful when you pull it out, you can try folding it in. In a minute, I'm gonna show you closely the problem and how it occurs. But first, the very first shirt that I pressed, it got stuck, I was able to pull it out and it was fine. I pressed a few shirts and then a second time it got caught. But this time, it actually tore off my tag and I wasn't too happy because that shirt was for a customer and now I had no tag with no size. If you see these springs, these springs are what the problem area is. Now, I'm not sure why, but the manufacturer should have made some type of cover to kind of cover it because that's where the shirts are getting stuck. Now, let me show you around here real quick. The springs are closed here and my heat press is open. But when you start pushing that heat press cover down, the springs, of course, begin to open and that's where the shirt drops in between the springs and gets stuck. So when you open it back up, see how they close back up again, of course. And that's how the shirts are getting caught. Anyway, so my husband hurt my frustration, came out, took a look and said, I think I have a solution. He went in the garage, cut a thin piece of wood and let me get my ruler so we can get the measurements on this. Looks like this is one quarter inch thick. The length is seven inches long. The width is about two and a half inches. He made these cuts here and I'm gonna show you why in a minute, they have a purpose. I want you to pay attention to these two metal pieces here. 
We're gonna lay our wood here. This is gonna serve as a cover. It's gonna cover our springs. And if you notice the two cuts that he made, those serve as stoppers so that our wood doesn't go all the way through. You have to be careful because if it did, there's a switch in the back that controls the timer. And if you accidentally hit it, you could bend it and then your timer wouldn't work. You would have to unbend it again. So the board just sits flat on there. So now you're probably wondering, is it gonna break your platen when you try and close it in? Nope. See, it's perfectly fine. You close it in and out and nothing happens. It's a good fit. So that my friends is the solution to that problem. Next topic, people always ask me, how do you get your designs on there straight and centered? Today, I'm gonna share a few tips, a few tools, and hopefully this will help you out. Now, granted, it does take a little practice. I used to do a lot of t-shirts in the past. I had a small t-shirt business, and a lot of times I would just eyeball it and could just do it without anything. But I am a perfectionist, so I'm gonna show you a few tools that you can use that will really help you out. First, I'm gonna show you this t-shirt ruler guide. This is by SKYG, and it comes in a pack of four for different size shirts. It comes for an infant, a toddler, youth shirt, and adult. I'm gonna show you how these work, and I'm also gonna post a direct link in the description on where you can find them. All right, so normally you would place your blank shirt on your heat press. As you can see, this shows you the neck cutout. The ruler will also show you the center. You're gonna use the center to align it with the center of your shirt. Use the neckline to line it up as well. So here's your center. This is where you want the center of your design to go. I wish I had a design cut out and weeded out, but I don't right now. So I'm just gonna use a piece of vinyl just to kind of show you. So if your design is on here, you wanna take the ends of uh, your design, then you're gonna Fold it in half, but make sure that you don't make a crease, okay? You don't want to make a crease right there. You want to go ahead and just bend the very top and make the crease just at the very top. So now you have the center of your design. So now that you know where the center of your design is, you can just center it with the center of your ruler. Once you have your center, you can remove your ruler. Now just double check that your letters are straight on the bottom. Now this leads me to another tool I like to use. This is called a T-square ruler. Now I originally got it from a different website, but I can't remember exactly where, but I'm gonna find another T-ruler for you and I'll post the link for you in the description below. This one is by Alumni Color. Let me try and get a little closer here. If you notice, this is a little bit thicker, has a little bit of a lip, which is going to sit against your mat on your heat press. This is going to help you get a straight design. Now, again, I don't have a cutout right now, but just pretend that this design has not been pressed on here. You would just lay it on here and then just line it up and move your design until it's straight with your ruler. Let me show you. Now, here you go. See how my design is straight? Pretty cool, huh? It really comes in handy, guys. Something else that you may need at some point are these heat press pillows, a soft foam enclosed in a nonstick fabric. They basically allow seams, zippers, pockets, collars, and other buttons to be absorbed into the pillow so that you can get an even pressure to apply your vinyl. You can get these in different sizes. I got these in a package of four. I'll post a link below. You insert them inside your t-shirt before you heat press. Things are gonna be a little thicker now, so it'll be a little harder to close. So you may have to adjust your pressure using the knob by loosening it up. Let me show you an example of when you may need to use the pillow. If you notice on your sleeve here, you've got that long seam. Well, it's not sitting really flat. So when you put your design on there, you don't wanna get a bad press result. So you would use your uh, long pillow that I had over here, and you would stick it inside your sleeve before you press your design on there. These are just a few tools I wanted to share with you. It doesn't mean that you need every single one of them, just use what's best for you. Again, this Craft Pro is from Heat Press Nation. If you'd like to know the price, I'll show you my invoice. It was $489.95 plus tax $530.37. Now, a couple weeks later, I did look it up and it was $539.95. Now, they usually carry it in white, mint green, and pink. I ended up getting the white due to inventory. 
If you're looking to spend less, you can. When I first got started, I bought this promo heat press from Amazon for a lot less and it lasted me six years. So they don't make this model anymore, but I'm gonna go ahead and post the link below to another popular model that a lot of people like to use. And it's a lot less for about $181. By the way, I am not being sponsored by Heat Press Nation. I just get asked a lot what kind of heat press I use or what you should use. And now that I have this purchase, I wanted to take the opportunity to share it with you and also share a few tips along the way. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more videos like this, I can show you other tools I use and my packaging. Just be sure to leave me a comment below and please don't forget to give this a like and share with your friends. If you haven't already subscribed, please be sure to do so below or hit my little picture on the side. Also, don't forget to hit the little bell to get notified of all of my new videos. And please be sure to check out these links on the site. Share with your friends. Thanks for watching and your support.